Hello everyone, I'm The Weather Dude. Welcome back. And today we're going to be giving our fifth 2021 Atlantic Hurricane season forecast and discussion. Before we do begin, however, be sure to like, subscribe, and share as these all help grow my channel. And this is going to be a very interesting video because not only have there been a lot of updates regarding this hurricane season, but we do actually have tropical activity out in the Atlantic currently. So this is going to be a pretty interesting video. So you might want to stay tuned till the end. So here we have our fifth 2021 hurricane season forecast and discussion, starting with the National Hurricane Center. Just a real quick depiction, Tropical Storm Bill. Hopefully the next video will have an update on that further. But it is now, we do have now have an X, and that means that the storm center is currently sitting in the Bay of Campeche, otherwise known as the southern southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Um, the chances of development have gone up to 40%. Scenario of showers and clouds that have developed over the southwest gulf and adjacent land areas and this is going to be moving pretty slowly to the north over the next several days and we could see a depression or a storm by the middle of next week again due to slow motion meaning that the storm is moving very slow regardless of any development tropical storm hurricane or not heavy rainfall will be over central america and southern mexico and even the gulf coast if it does eventually move that way all right so that was the eight o'clock update from the national hurricane center on that we're going to be talking about more of the hurricane season of today in general and what this could mean further from what could be a tropical storm bill, maybe talking about what could happen further beyond that. So starting off here with the Nino 3-4 uh, sea surface temperatures, I will show you where that region is coming up. And you can see for June and August and even through October, we're keeping below the zero line, but pretty much in the NSO neutral. As you can see, the lines are pretty much right in the middle. Um, we would have to get to negative 0.5 and stay there for a long time for it to be a La Nina. All right. And the latest graphs here that was just issued about a week ago does show that we will probably be staying in an ENSO neutral, but closing in pretty close to La Nina. And the best chance for that to happen would be towards the end of the hurricane season, maybe October through November. Uh, we could get into a La Nina. A lot of models do indicate that. And remember, by American standards, it's 0.5. By Australian standards, it's 0.8, as you can see on the screen here. We were in a La Nina early uh, this year, and then we climbed out of um, La Nina into a neutral, and maybe going back down towards La Nina, possibly by the end of the hurricane season. Either way, both ENSO neutral and La Nina both do yield um, to active hurricane seasons, or they can. All right. So again, as you can see here, the climate driver is currently neutral. We're like in an inactive zone right there. All right, so moving on to our SOI, all right, uh, these do indicate, this is another indicator um, of our El Nino or La Nina. And as you can see, above 8 indicates La Nina, while below 8 indicates El Nino. And as you can see, we're pretty much, ever since April, we've pretty much been um, in that middle zone. right? We haven't really got, we did get up to closer to 8 back in, um, back in uh, earlier in May and June or earlier in the month of May, I should say, and we've kind of fallen right into the middle, right about there. But you can see earlier this year, we were up too close to 20 or above 20. So that's definitely a La Nina. And then as you can see here, maybe late 2019, we were closer to those El Nino uh, type numbers. All right, so looking at the Nino 3-4 sea surface temperature forecast, this is through June, I think this goes through like October. As you can see, a lot of the models right now are in the middle, right? We're in like that neutral, right? They're both closer to that zero line. And the bottom one, as you can see here, is the average of all uh, seven of these models that you see here. All right, so July, again, look, they're pretty, you can't even see it because they're all pretty much at the zero line. August, September. Now, by September, as I was saying, September, October, November, we get closer to that La Nina zone, right? More models start to go left to the zero line. You can see the mean drops to like 0.2, negative 0.2. Um, and then by October, you can see more of the same, except the mean kind of drops to 0.3. So that means we're getting closer to La Nina. That doesn't mean necessarily we will get there. We'll have to see. Um, so looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, this is the latest uh, map that we see here. As you can see, for where the storm is sitting right now, where Bill is, or potential Bill, I should say, is sitting, um, we've, and I'll get a close-up view of this, so don't worry. Um, there have been a lot of increasing sea surface temperatures and increasing anomalies so that's really not good <laughs> all right so hopefully we'll have a more detailed forecast on bill um coming up in, a, in another video but i wanted to show you the zoomed out map so you can see 
a lot the lot of gray that we have is why we're like in that neutral kind of phase and even if you see a few hints of yellow that's still only 0.2 right we would need to see some slightly darker shades of yellow or orange to see that el nino kick in which i don't think will happen anytime soon but we're kind of sitting in that neutral and this is where the nino 3-4 region kind of sits like right on the equator and like south of hawaii it's pretty much how you can find it all right that's an easier way to find it um out in the tropical landing as well um off the coast of africa and places to the north of like the uh, of the islands it is we see we a little bit of cool sea surface temperature anomalies but in that mdr region however it's starting to get a bit above average right and remember we don't see activity out there usually for about another month and here's a zoomed in view of you can see the southwestern gulf where our current disturbance is sitting at we see those deeper colors maybe closer to two one to two degrees celsius above average the western caribbean also above even the gulf of mexico in general is still also above average and then north of the bahamas off the southeast coast um you could probably see it in the previous map here right we also see a lot of like even the east coast from maine to cape hatteras look, we see some reds that's like between three and four uh, degrees celsius above average so the east coast also getting pretty warm all right so looking at this trend also we're going to get a zoomed in view of this as well um these are the sea surface temperature trends and how they have trended um over the past week so you can see in the gulf of mexico oops sorry about that in the gulf of mexico you can see those oranges and even a few hints of red so maybe between one to two degrees celsius it increased in just the past week um while the nino 3 4 region seems to have stayed the same few areas maybe it climbed just a little little bit but notice what happened off the coast of africa here right a lot of darker colors maybe as much as three degrees or two to three degrees celsius increase in the sea surface temperatures over the past week or at least that's how the trend is saying caribbean eastern caribbean cooled off just a tad but that green color in the caribbean means it's pretty much just stayed the same as you can see green is like closer to zero right and then look at the east coast look at all the look at all the i don't know if you call that brown like a very deep red color we're talking about three to four plus um celsius or three to four degrees celsius increase in those sea surface temperatures and that's partly because of the heat wave that we had earlier all right in the on the east coast that's why the east coast even parts of the atlantic are have really trended up and here's a closer uh zoomed in view you can see the gulf of mexico has gone up as well as the southeast coast by far like one to two celsius degree increase plus all right next factor right we talked about the sea surface temperatures plenty just now here is the dry air the saharan air layer right dry air means like a reduction in tropical activity well here's where our disturbance is sitting right really no dry air Right? And it's going to be moving pretty slow, so it's going to be sitting in that no dry air zone for a pretty long time. Well, there is a little bit of dry air in the northern Gulf of Mexico, but um, the any system is likely to cut through that. It's very it's very faint dry air, and it might actually weaken by the time the storm even gets to that part of the Gulf of Mexico. There is also a little bit of dry air in the Caribbean. Again, similar to the Gulf, really not much. Right, most like ninety percent of the Caribbean or 92 percent of the Caribbean is pretty much uh, dry air free. Uh, East Coast, pretty much same thing for you. All right? It's also a lot of cloud cover out there right now, but even dry air, not that much. The only place that we still see dry air, for the most part, is out in the tropical Atlantic, right? Again, which is typical for this time of year. All right? Now getting into some of the convection maps, right? If we see a lot of green, that means we see more tropical convection. If we see brownish, reddish colors, that means not so much. And you can see, starting off with the GEFS model from the 14th of, Ju of June, through the 21st, you can see that the Gulf, even the East Coast, but I would say more so the Gulf and around that Central American gyre area where our disturbance is right now, we see some medium shades of green. That means some increased convection, right, between the 14th and the 21st of June, right? Same model. Let's go to the 21st to the 28th of June. Still, we still see green areas. And this zone right here is where we typically see tropical activity in the first month of the hurricane season. So, Definitely be on the lookout in the Gulf Coast, in the Caribbean, and even the Southeast Coast as well. Next model is the CFS model, right? Here is the 18th to the 25th of June is what we're talking about. Um, we still see some convection in the Gulf of Mexico, but not as much in the Caribbean and the tropical Atlantic. But let's move on, though, to the 25th of June through July 2nd. And you can see a lot of increased convection, both the Eastern Pacific and the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico and the Southeast Coast, and even the East Coast. Right, so a lot of increased convection through the end of this month and even the very beginning of July. So that's going to be something to watch out for 
and we'll see if any of the um, next model runs pick up on that as well. Tropical cyclone heat potential. Last time I showed this to you guys, there was probably greens and a hint of yellow. Well, now there's a lot of yellows and a hint of orange. You can even start to see developing in the Caribbean. And now we're getting closer to that moderate, between moderate and high um, in the Caribbean. In the Gulf, remember, the tropical cyclonic heat is making its way. Remember, this is also under the ocean or under the ocean surface. So via the Gulf Stream, this is all making its way into the Gulf of Mexico. And remember, hurricane season just started. We still see some low to moderate tropical cyclonic heat here. In the Gulf of Mexico. All right, so depending on where our disturbance, here's our disturbance right here. I will we'll put the little X, that's where it's sitting right now. If it moves north, like due north, like the Euro and the um, Canadian have been saying, spoiler alert, um, if it does move north like that, it moves to an area where we don't see as much tropical cyclonic heat, but the GFS has been hinting at potentially it moving farther eastward. And if it were to move near or even over the Gulf Stream, that will really give it a lot of uh, energy boost, and that would that would be really dangerous. If it moved over the Gulf Stream and then made landfall on the Gulf Coast, that would make the storm a lot stronger because it has more energy to feed itself into it. So we'll see how that plays out. Either way, though, when we look at the sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, they're still pretty warm either way. But tropical cyclonic heat is also very important. So here is our ensemble base probabilities from the NCEP, the FNMOC, the Canadian, as well as the European model, the, the four we usually look at here. Um, and the latest have given a 50 to 60% chance of development for that disturbance down there in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Also, another disturbance in off the southeast coast, maybe upwards of around 40% chance they give that one in the next five days. GFS model I was looking at yesterday was hinting at a lot of series of low pressure systems and make their way off the southeast coast over the next few days or the next week. And one of those could turn into a tropical or subtropical spin up. I was looking at that. So we'll see if the model, other models pick up on that as well. So that is probably how they're getting this one. So again, here's our disturbance we're watching right now. Uh, the other ones are in separate basins. All right, so here's number one and then potentially number two, although that one hasn't been recognized by the National Hurricane Center just yet. All right, so let's move on to, this is just the NCEP. Now we focus on the NCEP and the ensemble based probabilities, but I like this one because it gives us like what the ensemble model tracks have it, right? Um, then here's the storm. And the NCP itself gives it about a 40 to 50% chance of development indicated by that brighter orange color. And they have it moving north and curving east as a lot of storms do typically move up the east coast or closer to the southeast coast. And that would impact areas between Florida and say like New Jersey or Pennsylvania in between those areas if it were to move up the east coast. Uh, maybe the remnants moved up that way. So that's something we're going to be watching again. That is going to be happening over the next say like <laughs> seven to 10 plus days. All right, it might not even make landfall like until the 19th through the 21st. It might, so it might take that long for the storm to make landfall. So here's the shear right now. And this is the only thing, this is the only fact that we have good sea surface temperatures. We have good tropical cyclonic energy below the ocean surface, right? We have little dry air. The only thing that's really hurting the system or could potentially hurt the system is the wind shear. And this map I like because it works like a traffic light. Green means it's good to go. Yellow means it's okay. Like even yellow on this map still means it's pretty, it, it's okay, but not quite as favorable. And then the red means we're not as favorable. Like we're not favorable to develop a tropical system um, given the wind shear conditions. And as you can see, much of the central and southern Gulf does have some red right now. But even if you look at the numbers inside of it, um, between 25 and 40 knots, we have seen it much higher before. Um, that I think that's enough to still stop a tropical system, especially um, a disturbance of this magnitude. But look at the northern Gulf, really sh like shear free. Um, and we could see, I'll be showing you the wind shear forecast um, pretty much coming up next, and we'll see if that could go away. Um, here's another wind shear observation map. And as you can see, again, pretty much around 40, 45 knots of shear. But look at where the disturbance is sitting right now. Notice how the shear in this region right here has dropped a few knots, actually. In just the past 24 hours so we'll be looking out for that also just to the north we did see um wind shear increase by a few knots in the past 24 hours all right so but look at the northern gulf northern gulf we have seen a lot of dark blues pretty much little to no wind shear so this year could fade away um and remember this storm is going to be sitting here for a while as well so the wind shear will it'll have some time to fade away and we'll be watching for that over the next few days so here's the shear forecast according to the cfs model here is the wind shear anomalies. And as you can see, 
we pretty much had normal to even slightly below normal shear in the northern, pretty much northern half of the Gulf of Mexico between the 12th and the 19th, right? And between the 12th and the 19th, the storm will probably be in somewhere in this zone. Actually, I should probably make it a little bit wider because kind of like a code of uncertainty, we don't quite know yet, but it'll probably be in, in this zone here between the 12th and the 19th. Maybe like today it's around here. It might be like over here by the 19th, depending on how the steering flow works as well. But look what happens between the 19th and the 26th, right? Right as the storm is getting ready to make its landfall, the shear in the Gulf becomes below average, right? So that might help favor development of this system, right? So maybe in the beginning of its journey, it might have some above average shear, right? As we saw in the last map, but then once it heads into the central and northern Gulf, the shear becomes below average, according to this model run of the CFS, and then maybe increasing development. So that is going to be something we're going to have to watch out for. Uh, Caribbean, uh, Caribbean wind shear as a whole, uh, pretty much hovering, again, up and down, but around the black line. So pretty much average. Same goes for you guys in the tropical Atlantic as well. All right. And then looking at the 2021 forecast, this is like a newer CFS forecast or CSU forecast, I should say. Uh, so name storms 18, which is definitely above the average of now 14. Remember, the averages have gone up, and I'll show you that on the next slide. Um, and then our hurricanes is 8 as opposed to the average of 7, and major hurricanes is 4 as opposed to 3.2. Also, another another system, another um, tool that's used a lot is ACE, Accumulated Cyclone Energy, 150 above the average 123. And you might say, why did the averages go up? Well, the NOAA actually did increase the averages because remember, it's every... Um, it's like a 29-year gap or a 30-year gap. So 1981 to 2010 was the averages we were always gotten used to using. But now that 2020 is over, uh, the 1991 to 2020 averages have come in. Right? And they have kind of gone up a little bit. Not by much, but a little bit. So 12 main storms was the previous average that we've gotten used to. As of, uh, Now it's 14. Six hurricanes now became seven. And we stay at three major hurricanes. So now our average is 14, 7, and 3, not 12, 6, and 3. I know in the past it's been easier to remember because you just take 12 and have it twice. Um, but now our new averages are 14, 7, and 3. So looking at my forecast here, and again, this is also on my website. If you haven't checked that out yet, be sure to uh, go do that afterwards. Uh, so again, here's the averages on the left. My forecast still remains a 15 to 19 named storm, 7 to 9 hurricanes, and 2 to 4 major hurricanes. Um, AccuWeather's latest one that I've seen was 16 to 20 named storms, 7 to 10 hurricanes, and 3 to 5 major hurricanes. Uh, CSU, as I just went over, 18 named storms, 8 hurricanes, 4 major hurricanes, and the weather channel pretty similar to that, 18 named storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. So this season, as it looks right now, will be above average, not like 2020, but definitely, uh, I would say, notice, not slightly, but noticeably above average. But I don't think, as of right now, it could get as strong as the 2020 season, but it is definitely still a possibility for this to be a very major hurricane season. So that is all I have for today. Stay tuned for updates. I am DeWeatherDude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.